If you will please stand with me and turn in your hymn books to hymn 185. Hymn number 185, and we'll do all three verses of His Way with Thee, 185. Jesus and be always pure and good. Would you walk with him within the narrow road? Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and by giving all would you have him save yourself you never fall let him have his way with thee his power can make you what you ought to be his blood can cleanse your heart and make you free his love can fill your soul and you will see twas best for place of constant rest would you prove him true and providential test would you in his service labor always at your best let him have his way with thee his power can make you what you ought to be his blood can cleanse your heart and make you free his love can best for him to have his way with thee. Amen and amen. Brother Mask, would you open us up in a word of prayer, please, sir? Man, thank you. You may be seated. Well, good morning. It is good to have you here at Bible Baptist Church. We appreciate you coming out. Let me tell you first, this is our 75th we our se wedding anniversary. <laughs> well, we are the bride of Christ, are we not? Uh, 75th anniversary of the establishment of, of Bible Baptist Church here in Bridgeport, Texas. And uh, I know that it doesn't look like our anniversary day. Things are uh, very minimal right now. We would normally be having a, a going into our revival and special message today and music and preaching this afternoon and dinner on the grounds and all that kind of stuff would be going on. But right now, uh, we are still about 80, 70, 80 percent shut down. Amen. Uh, but we do want to be excited about who we are uh, in our community. God has used this church powerfully over the years. Uh, and uh, next year, uh, if we don't have a panic, a pandemic, or if the rapture does not occur between now and then, and if it does, they can do whatever they want to next year. Uh, but uh, otherwise, next year, we're going to try to do something big and celebrate our 75th, 76th anniversary, kind of put them together, and uh, we'll have some music and a bunch of stuff then. And, but for this year, it is what it is. Uh, amen. And uh, we can't change any of that. Uh, after a bit, we're going to have a special. Brother Gary is going to sing for us this morning. Uh, but uh, please uh, keep in prayer some of our people. I got a call this morning or a text from Brother Adam Hoots, and he had uh, uh, Nicole at the emergency room this morning with a lot of pain and uh, said they thought she might have kidney stones. Uh, so I haven't heard back from him yet as to what they've determined or what they've done. Uh, kidney stones for those of you I, I can tell the ones who have had them when I said kidney stones they all went ooh 
so they know what it is. Uh, so keep those in your prayers also, if you would. Uh, keep the Pattersons in your prayer. Miss Pattersons are home. Christy Hoots also in your prayers as she's recovering. Uh, Miss Howe had her surgery on her eyes. Doctor said that went really well. Uh, but she's also at home recovering and going to be a couple of weeks with uh, certain activities she has to do, has to sleep face down. You know how that goes as they're trying to heal. Uh, but she's so excited that she might get some eyesight back. And so keep that in your prayers. And then Miss Farrier is also at home. Uh, uh, and we pray doing better and doing well uh, as well. Also, if you would, uh, there's a church, a Baptist church out north of us here. Uh, most of y'all are familiar with it's called Pleasant View uh, and today uh, they are closed down uh, they're not having services out there other than online because they've had uh, some COVID in their church and they're trying to uh, nip it in the bud and try to keep it from being come something that will infect more of their people I think this morning someone said they had two active cases I think is what they said they had uh, but they are not going to have services this morning so pray for them uh, amen and uh, pray for our own church and for our country, amen. Uh, and my only political announcement is if you want a cure for COVID, just give it three more weeks. As soon as the elections are over, we'll find a miraculous cure. Uh, so long when it can't be a political uh, scapegoat uh, for the elections, then we'll find a cure. But anyway, enough of that. Take some notes also next week. Time change, amen. If you're like me, I go to bed about 10 o'clock, so I'm going to set my clock back at 10 o'clock Saturday night to 9 o'clock, get an extra hour of sleep. Really, I won't. I'll set it back and stay up till 11 o'clock and go to bed at 10 o'clock like I normally do. Uh, but <clears throat> be sure to turn your clock back, amen? Uh, that's next week, amen? And I don't believe that we have... Oh, we got a couple of missionary families with us this morning, and we want to welcome them to our services. Uh, and I had your names, but I don't remember them. Let me just ask you, gentlemen, if you'll stand and introduce you and your family and tell them where you're from or where you're going to or where you're from. Of Chile. Now, that's not how they say Chile. 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 Yeah. Brother? Yeah, yeah. Mozambique, amen. Good to have you folks. They're up at the uh, BBTI, I believe, right now, uh, studying their languages. And uh, ever preacher, ever preacher. What was your name, brother? You with the beard. Uh, Taylor. Taylor? You know, every preacher I know would wrestle you or buy from you your voice. I would. Uh, you have such a voice, it resonates. It's a beautiful preaching voice. Uh, I used to have a real good friend like that. We called him Luscious Lucius because his voice was just so full. Uh, and, to, and just as a conversation, then he started to try to preach, and he got real squealy. So, uh, but uh, anyway, it's good to have you folks. Appreciate you coming down to worship with us this morning. Where are we up to? Brother, oh, you got a song, and then Gary. Okay. All right, well, we do have one more song. The second song that was sung at the charter service was 366, Near the Cross. So if you will, please stand with me. Turn to him 366. And we'll do the first, second, and last verses of Near the Cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious mountain. Oh uh -huh. 
last verse now. Near the cross I'll watch and wait, hoping, trusting ever, till I reach the golden strand, just beyond the be seated. Please be reminded again that we're taking up the offering via the drop box out by the front door. So uh, if you will, drop it in either on your way out or however you want to do that. But this time we do have a special from the Pollux.
Well, it is good to have you here at Bible Baptist Church as we do celebrate as best we can the 75th anniversary of Bible Baptist uh, a Church here in Bridgeport. And it's been a long 75 years, and as I, uh, uh, I am aware, and so are you as also, those that had, uh, had started this church are all passed off the scene now. We uh, lost our last charter member a few years ago. And so we're all at least a second, third, fourth generation coming down the way. Uh, but as we all know, we stand on the shoulders of those who went before us. The work and the uh, commitment and the <clears throat> sacrifices that were made uh, to put this church here and to give us the comfort and the things that we have, uh, we didn't earn all this by ourselves. Amen. This is a product of God's blessing to those who went before us and, and uh, uh, gave us a great encouragement and gave us a great uh, history that we look back on. But for the years ahead, you and I sitting here, we will be the history. Uh, and what will tie the beginning of our church to the future of our church is the people in between. Uh, uh, and we ought to all, every, each and every one of us, always be a set of us that we are they that love God and walk in the ways of God and walk according to the Word of God. Amen? We're living in a day when we're being told and we're hearing it on almost every TV channel nowadays uh, that there's going to be a new normal. That things are never going to be the same. Amen? Uh, uh, and uh, it's almost like we uh, are hearing something for the first time. <clears throat> My Bible tells me there's no new thing under the sun. Uh, there is nothing that, uh, uh, that uh, is going to change or uh, that hasn't already changed and has changed more than once. Amen? <clears throat> Excuse me, there it goes again. <clears throat> I'm allergic to this something up here. Maybe it's Zach, I'm not sure. <laughs> Acts chapter 17, verse 21, when Paul uh, was on the uh, uh, walking into uh, on Mars Hill, he accused the people there, said to the people there, they were always seeking some new thing. Uh, so look, people looking for something new isn't new, is it? Uh, I found also in 2 Timothy uh, uh, 3 uh, that it says that we there, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 14, that we're admonished to continue in the things that we have learned and been taught. Amen. So there's always been uh, uh, a desire or an inkling of, of uh, believers to want to move from one place to another. And the truth of the matter is the Bible says we're all bent on backsliding. Uh, and so that uh, the, the sin of the flesh and the sin of the world begins to pull at us uh, and pull at us and pull at us. And we must uh, keep our mindset on Jesus Christ, keep focused on the Word of God, and keep warring against that flesh of our, or that sin of our own flesh that would draw us away from the things of God. And surely we're living in a time of that happening. For when we become sheltered in place, when we spend six months without having uh, uh, the normal body of Christ together, it will take its toll on God's church. Amen. And on God's people. And so I want to uh, take you this morning over to a, uh, a couple of places, if I might. Uh, and I want to take you to Jeremiah chapter 6. And I've heard this text preached on oftentimes, but you know, I'm, I've been doing this now for some 45 years, I think, uh, since I was 30. Uh, uh, and uh, so it's been a while. I'm old. Uh, and uh, all the time that I've been doing that, I think in all my history of those years, I've preached one anniversary day for my church. That's always a celebration, isn't it? That's always a time you either start a revival, you have dinner on the grounds, you have guest speakers in, and uh, you have special music, and it's a big promotion. So this morning, you're stuck with me. Amen. Amen. But I'm getting to preach my second anniversary day in 45 years. That's something. And I went back and checked, folks. Amen. Amen. 
And so Jeremiah chapter 6 is not a text not used widely. I've heard it preached before. Uh, uh, but when I was getting ready to do this, I said, Lord, now what is it that I can say? How can I admonish our church uh, uh, to excite them for our history and then to encourage them for our future in a time which says you may not even have a future? <laughs> Amen. And I do understand it's a terrible time. I do understand it's a, it's a difficult hour, but my God still rules. My God still sits on the throne. My God is still the authority of all time until there is no time, and even from there He just begins. Amen? And so uh, we are talking here uh, in Jeremiah, if you would, we're going to read from verse 16, only read verse uh, 16 uh, and 17 just to get an idea uh, uh, of what God's command is through the prophet of God. If you'll stand with me, we will uh, read this. And it's being written in a time when Israel has been pulled away from God, when Israel's walking in the newness of other things, when Israel has not stood with the eternal God and has forsaken those things that were given by God to this nation to bless them. Listen to what he says in verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, listen to this, we will not walk therein. Amen. Verse 17, also I have set a watchman over you saying, I almost preached a message on the watchman, but I like the other one better. So here we are. Also I set a watchman over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Therefore, ye nations, and, uh, and know, uh, o, o congregation, what is among them? He's warning them uh, that they are changing and they're going the wrong way. Amen? God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He expects His church to be as He has founded it and given a Bible and a Word of God, which I'm going to preach on tonight, a Word of God that gives us instructions and gives us the old paths, the paths that were established by God for men who would walk in holiness. You may be seated. How many of y'all ever been to a novelty store. Amen. You know what the word novelty means? A lot of times we get the idea well, when they say novelty that's something stupid. Like a gad gift. Amen? That's not what necessarily the word novelty means. The word novelty means something new, or the quality or the state having not been seen before. Something that's one off. Everything that we have in our society today at one time was quoted a novelty, something new not seen before. You remember your first computer? It used to be a big joke, not so much anymore because most of us in this category have passed off the scene that if you had a DVD player, uh, it sat on your TV and went flashing all the time, flashing wanting you to set the date and the time and all that, and none of us knew how to do that. That was a real novelty to have one of those in your, in your, uh, uh, in your house. I remember when HDTV came out, and you had that, and right now if you've got HDTV, get, a, get you one that's not HD, and when it comes on the screen, it's a little black box. It's not, wow, you know, you can't put it on an 80-inch TV. Amen? It was considered a novelty. Do you all remember uh, uh, when we first had cell phones? Was that not a novelty? Hadn't seen that, but that which is a novelty often becomes that which is expected and accepted. Amen? And so this idea of novelty is just something new. Amen? This word would apply to men as, as things that changes and, and every generation, almost every day that we live now, it changes by some degree or another. Uh, my wife has got a, 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 a telephone that's older than dirt. It's an S5E. I'm sorry, I forgot to put the S5E. Yeah, whatever it is. The telephone company didn't even want it back. They told her it's a boat anchor. Get rid of it. You don't need Folks, do you remember the flip tops? Was that something not strange? And we said then, can you imagine when I got my first flip top, Someone said, you know, one of these days we're going to be able to take that phone and actually see each other. And somebody else said, that'll never happen. Really? 
when they come back out with a flip top, I'm getting one. But I went down the other day, my wife and I, because her phone is terrible, and we went to the AT&T app store. You know what they sell? Novelties. First time seen. Amen? You know what they have out now? S, is it? iPhone 12. Can you imagine that? When I got my first flip top that we would have iPhone 12s. You see, everything does change somewhat from year to year. And those changes are often very good. They have brought us into technology uh, uh, that we have such an advance. I used to wonder uh, when those two prophets in Israel would lay dead in the street. How in the world the whole world would see that and celebrate their being killed and uh, uh, celebrate that humanity had defeated God and had defeated God's message and, and everybody was celebrating. I said, how in the world can that all happen? You understand now how it can happen? Amen. So new things are always happening. Medication, medical, the medical industry is changing so fast. Amen. I told you this some time ago, but I thought about it this morning when I was going through my message. Years ago, I was in Springfield, so that would have been back in 70, 75 to 79, somewhere right in that area. I went up to my brother's in Goshen, Indiana, and went to an auction. Bought a set of uh, world book encyclopedias that were probably at that time, that had been the 70s, they were probably in the 40s. Uh, they were older and they had several of the yearly things that they had updated it with. You know how they used to do that? I don't know if they even sell those things anymore. You just get them online. Don't even need a book anymore, just go online. I had to take the Sims card out of my wife's phone yesterday to put it in the new phone she got. How many of y'all taking the Sims card out of one of your iPhones? Get a hammer. Bam! But go online. What's her name? Siri. Siri, show me how to take the Sims card out of an i12 phone. The picture picks up. Says, get the little thing, poke it in there, pops out. Yeah? Isn't that amazing? Blows my mind that, that you can do all this kind of stuff. It's amazing. Things are changing. And much of it is good. Now, let me share this with you. Some of the technology, if you don't, oh, I was going to tell you about that World Book thing. I forgot that. That happens to me frequently, missionaries. When I got that, I was reading through it. I, I was, had started the church in Miami, Oklahoma, brought those books back, put them out. I was reading through it. And I read this thing about transplanting organs. Back then, they were just starting to transplant kidneys and were doing some lung transplant. They were novelties, just being seen, and people saying, uh uh, even some religious groups saying, you can't have, you can't do any of that kind of stuff because you're putting some other person's organs in your body and you're infecting yourself with their, with their sin and their poor character. We're all poor charactered anyway. But I read this in there because they said, it has been said that one day we will actually transplant hearts. And the author of the world book encyclopedias in the 40s that these were printed in said this, but we all know that'll never happen. And right after that, for those of you who are older, some of you young people won't remember this, I saw on my news on a television that itself was a novelty a few years earlier, a man hooked up to an imitation heart, a machine external to his body. Remember, that's what the first ones were. And they were keeping him alive by a machine. And everybody said, it's the day of the beast. And now, it's not common, but it isn't unheard of, is it, to see a heart transplanted. Lungs, almost it's common. In fact, they tell you, get on your license and get your driver's license out and have it put on there that you are an 
organ donor. So they can take your eyeballs and your liver and your heart uh, uh, and your lungs and anything else that's usable and put it in somebody else. I'm waiting to when they can tell me they can take my brain and put it in a better body. Amen? So there's this design. Oh, I've, I've got to get after this message. I'm not even out of the introduction. So there's this natural move. God's given us the ability. God's given us the, uh, uh, the ingenuity. God's blessed us with a desire to know, and He's allowed humanity to move forward in technology and medical uh, areas. In everything that we do, we are not like it was 100 years ago. And by the way, 50 years from now, they'll look at us and think we were, came out of a cave. Unless Jesus comes. But you know, if Jesus came today... We still have a thousand and seven years. That's a long time. Anyway, there's always been this change. Always will be this change. And that's all right, folks. Change is good. Some change not good, but change is good. Amen. Uh, uh, but I'm going to tell you where Christianity is concerned and where the Word of God is concerned, change is not permitted. We may change our methods. We may change even our dress code. I love your beard. Amen. I, I used to wear one like that. But right now it would just be gray. You know. I can remember a time when I had a beard like that. Just looked that good too. Probably looked better. <laughs> and one of the gentlemen in my church came up to me. This has been back in probably 79 or 80. He said, Preacher, it's not good for a man of God to wear a beard. I remember a time when with that beard you would have to cut that off or there's a lot of churches you wouldn't get into. Things have changed. Amen? I can also remember even before you were alive maybe where there were some priests in Israel that went down and they cut off half their beard. And they were told you stay where you are till your beard gets grown out because we don't want you in the temple without your beard. So these things change. They, they kind of move from, but Jesus or God said, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He said His, the Word of God is given by inspiration and is profitable. Well, it's the same Word of God that's been written and given to us by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. It has not changed. And, and Jeremiah said that we're to look for the old paths. In a time when they're warning us, beware, things are going to change. God's not changed. His word hasn't changed and it's not going to change in how we walk in holiness. For if you uh, 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 believe in God, you are commanded to walk in holiness. Be ye holy as he is holy. And that command doesn't change. And the path that we're to walk in is already there. And the Bible says this, that this word is a light unto my path that I might walk in the ways of God every day I live. Not looking for the exit ramps, not looking for the changes, but looking, oh, there is this natural of change. Dress code may change. Beards may change. I hope they go back. That book doesn't. Amen. I'll preach on that tonight. I don't want to get into that too much tonight because we're in 2 Thessalonians talking about uh, be not deceived. And one of them, the last thing that we're not to be deceived by is the Word, the changing of the Word of God. We'll talk about that tonight. So there's always this changing in style, changing even in methodology, but never the change in the Word of God, nor the way we practice our faith. What I want to do this morning is relate to you or try to the great value of the old path, that which is established that which is ordained and blessed and empowered by God. And the more we move away from the old paths, the less power we see, the less presence of the Holy Spirit we see, the less of God's blessings we see. So what's the value of the Word of God? Number one, it gives me a standard by which to measure the new way. Amen? Amen? I measure the new way by the old way. Amen. And we all do that, do we not? In the new way, there is often new truths that are being promoted. But I'm telling you this, the old path judged the truths of today. 
For they which God has written down, the Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable. And it goes on and tells us about how it will uh, uh, conform us into the image of Christ and that we might be truly furnished unto all good things. I'm telling you folks, God gave that Bible because He knew that generation by generation we were going to change. We were going to see uh, uh, people who didn't know anything about history, nothing about the past. One of the problems in Israel is those who had forgot the great power of God when He brought them out of Egypt and He gave Gave us a Bible and he says, now these are the old paths. These are the things I did for those who came before you and will do for you if you walk in my way. Amen. The new paths are judged by the old paths. Because the old paths, if they be of the word of God, will always, always be a light unto your feet. The test of these new things comes in several ways. Number one, how does it affect your conscience? Now I do know the conscience is something you can't trust much. But when you get saved and the Holy Spirit moves in and you begin to hide the Word of God in your heart, your conscience will be, listen to me now, your conscience like your soul was going to be attached to God. And the book becomes a convicting power, not just for the lost to get them saved, but for the believer that they might walk in righteousness. Amen. And the new things, and when you say, should we do this or should we do that, here has to be the answer. How does it line up to this book? Amen. If God does not permit it, you cannot do it. I was talking to a fellow day before yesterday. And the conversation got around to what he was and who he was, what he believed. And uh, I don't even remember how I got there now. But, because I, was that day for you? Well, I was at the Veterans, whatever day that was. What day did I go to the Veterans? Friday, it was Friday then. And so I asked him, I said, uh, where do you go to church? And he told me. And, and he asked me, where do you go to church? I said, well, I'm the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Bridgeport. He said, well, that's great. He said, uh, I like Baptist people. You just don't have as much liberty as we do. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, uh, yeah, because uh, uh, our church allows us to, to drink. I said, I considered going to that church. <laughs> I really did. My problem was the Bible never allowed it. Amen. Don't give me all this stuff that Jesus promoted wine and drinking and drunkenness and all this because he didn't. Amen? I don't care what society does to the Word of God to make it more adaptable to our sin and more adaptable to what we want to fulfill the lust of our flesh. God's Bible is a light to holiness. And it cannot and it will not change. If you go over to the book of Revelation, when the dead, great and small, are raised up and stood before uh, the throne of God, the white, uh, the white throne judgment, where Jesus will sit without mercy uh, 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 and judge those who are without Jesus Christ, the books are open and the Word of God is there, the same Word of God as God gave it when He inspired the speakers, the same Word of God that we believe the King James Bible is preserved in. That Word of God, unchanging, will judge the souls of men. You got a little bit of tonight's message. <laughs> so that the Word of God begins to be the newness of my conscience. The Word of God begins to be the judgment of my action even as I perceive my action in light of the Word. When you serve God, your, your thinking changes, I guess is a way to put it. Amen. For years, missionaries, you'll understand this, most of you will if you study your Bible. It took me several years to formulate a method by which I study and prepare sermons. I now have a, an outline that is not new with me, but I've, I've imported it into my life, a certain way that I lay out my introduction, my body, my conclusion. I put it all together the same way. And no matter what the message is, it all plugs into that outline whether it's topical, historical, whether it's textual, or whether it's uh, uh, whatever it is, it's, it's all plugged in to that outline. Until you begin to think that way. Amen? Amen. I can pick up a can. Now, nowadays I'm a diabetic, so everything has to be read. 
okay? And you start to read all the information and you start to plug it in to your formatting. You think that way. You do it for 45 years. You do five messages a week for 45 years. Everything in your life is susceptible to that programming. Amen? Amen? When you get saved, God moves in. And He brings the light. He brings the Word of God. He is the Word of God. He and the Son and the Father are one. And the Bible says in John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word of God, or the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I almost forgot how to quote John 1. Wow. So that this begins to impact you, and God begins to give you a new outline or a new process of living. And little by little, you begin to think that way. You know why the devil wants to change this book? Change your thinking. I've got to get off this point. I'm going to use up the whole message for tonight. So it tests our conscience as our conscience is changed. I could go on and talk about here, it's going to test your character. Remember when you got saved, you were so excited about being saved? Amen? God had washed away your sin. You were rejoicing in the things of God, weren't you? I was. Maybe you didn't get the same dose I got. And I needed it. But then I found out right, right, just almost instantly, that there was a lot of things wrong with me. That he'd given me eternal life, but there was a lot of problems in my character. And you know what I've discerned 45 years later? Still is. And for 45 years, every time God gets me halfway cleaned up in one area, he says, now let's go open this little door. When I get to heaven and this mortality puts on immortality, this corruption puts on incorruption, God will quit opening doors. Because I'm going to be like Jesus then. But until then, my character is still subject to God's moving and changing by this book. I'm almost out of time. This is a five-point message. We're just now at point one. I put in here, secondly, the old paths are they which develop good, I want to say character, but I don't really like that word, but develop good faithfulness, I guess. Amen? It holds a light. It holds an encouragement. The old paths not only tell you how, or what faithfulness is required in your life, then it tells you how to achieve it. Amen. Ain't that odd? God doesn't tell you, go, I want you to do this. I want you to be a giver. Every Baptist hates tie the word tithe. It's, a, it's a cush, almost a curse word. I want you to be a giver. And people say, that's terrible. I can't do that. God says, yes, you can. Let me show you how. Number one, when you believe everything came from God, you don't have any trouble giving him 10%. Because actually you're not giving him anything. He's letting you keep 90%. Amen? And the more that you walk in with God and the more that the Bible becomes that character changing thing in you, the more you'll get involved. Not just tithes, it's just the starting point. You know that? Amen? Then you got missions. I hate missionaries. They cost, missionaries cost me a lot of money. Over the last 45 years, what I've given to missions, I could own me a whole fleet of rent houses. Amen? You've got specials. Now, we all know teenagers aren't worth much. I'm sorry. I'm not what, brother, other than that one. I like him because he's bigger than a stinking house. Are you 16 yet? 15. That's a stand up. I was looking at him by his daddy this morning. He's three inches taller than his daddy. Thank you, bud. They're not worth much. Yet every year, we take up money, we sell cakes, we do all we can to get them to camp so we can see God work in their life. Now go back to before you met God. You ever considered you'd be doing that? Somebody comes by and says, Preacher, we're in terrible need. Need some money. And you say, well, let me help you. 
I thought one time I'm going to go in my office and I'm going to lock the front door of the church so nobody can get in. You see, when you get saved, the paths God puts you on always has a great desire to help those around you. Amen. Never had that before, I would say. Amen? The old paths don't change. Let's move a page or two. I wanted to cover this. This is really the main crux of my message. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the old ways, and see and ask for the old paths, <clears throat> where is the good way, <clears throat> excuse me, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. But they said, We will not walk in therein. We'll leave that latter part. Might not even get to that. That's all right. How do I find or how do I identify the old paths? Everybody I know, if you're a believer, especially when you're first saved, you say, God, whatever you want, I want it. Whatever you want me to do, <clears throat> I want to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I never have a problem with this till I get up to preach. And so there has to be this question, <clears throat> how do I walk in the light of the Word of God? How do I find that path? Because my Bible tells me in the New Testament, <clears throat> broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there are that are thereon, but narrow is the way. Now we don't have time to talk about how you can't be on the narrow path to the, to the glory and greatness of God uh, without being saved. You are, that's an automatic given. If you're not saved here this morning, you're on the broad path leading to destruction. And God's plan hasn't changed about that either. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ and by nothing else. It's not by works or church or water or none of those other things. It's, <clears throat> it's by the, <clears throat> the power of the blood. And that's what the Bible's all about. That red ribbon that runs all the way from Genesis chapter 3 all the way to the end of the book of Revelation is the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> but how do I know as a believer that I'm in the right place? Well, listen to what verse 6 says, or 16. And th thus saith the Lord, he's speaking to Israel now, stand ye in the ways. Stand in the ways. By the way, Jesus said, I'm the way. Amen. Amen. He didn't say stand in any way you want to. He said, stand in the way. There's only one. No, I'm not going to say that. Sometimes I forget I'm on television or whatever that is. Amen. First, or John chapter 1, where we were just quoting a while ago, uh, uh, when Jesus said, I am the way, uh, that means that the Word of God, the Bible that we have, He said that He is the Word. He is the, uh, the living Word, and this is the written Word, and they agree in all things. Amen. Again, tonight when we get into it, we're going to talk about preservation. Amen. We believe we have a preserved Word of God. I don't have time. Come back tonight. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to identify that for what preservation is, uh, and I'm going to take man's hands off of it and man's fingerprints out of it. Yes. Providential preservation. We'll talk about that. Amen? So that we need to find the old paths and stand in them. How do you find the old paths? If this, is the, if this is the testimony of God's will for us yesterday and today, then this is the testimony of the paths of God, that it's the testimony of the light of God that will lead us into uh, our righteousness and holiness. So how do we find uh, God's way? I'm telling you, the Bible said stand in it. Get in it. Learn it. Amen? The biggest shortcoming that I find there are many more. I don't get out much. Amen. I'm not a, politic, a politician. I don't go to church to church. I know missionaries have to. God bless you, said brother, and that's hard stuff. Uh, amen. But I stay at home. <clears throat> I do my preaching here. I'm a local New Testament Baptist preacher, uh, and I pastor this church. At least for the time that God keeps me alive on this earth, I'm going to try to do that to the best of my uh, ability. But I know this. The old paths are they which declare God's Word. And so if I'm to stand in the way, I need to stand in the book. 
Not looking for loopholes, but looking for obedience. If I'm to stand in the book, that means I have to know it. Doesn't it? The Bible says, study to show thyself a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? Amen. Most Baptist churches, and you will know this is true. You've been, some of them I know. If you walked in and say, anybody here can show me how to get saved? You'd have 14 people run you down. You walk in that same church and say, does anybody here know how to live godly? If we fail anywhere, it's we don't disciple our people. We don't teach them holy living. We teach them how to get saved, how to get their loved ones saved, but then we don't teach them how to walk in the things of God. Teach them how to study their Bible. We don't do that anymore. What happened? God tell, said, study, study, study. I took a class in Bible college that just was that. Bible study. You mean you got to teach preachers how to study the Bible? I guess they thought they did. Because it was six hour class, two semesters, three hours a semester studying the Bible. I learned how to study the Bible according to studying a verse, a word, an idea, a chapter, a book, the Bible in a whole. J. Vernon McGee on how to study through the Bible in five years. Wow! I can't, it took me, what, almost three years to get through Revelation. Studying the Bible. We put out a Bible study thing here that we do at our church that we, every year we start it, uh, uh, I think, first of March. We study, start a new year because that's when we first started it. So our year starts in March. We've done it for years. When we first started doing this, we made up 35 of those things and they were all gone. Had people come and want them. Starting, we're going to change them out this next Sunday. We get a new one for this next two month period. The last time I printed 16 copies and throwed away seven. What happened? Now I hope that if you just found a better way to study through the Bible in a year than what I do. I hope that's true. Maybe you got tired of doing it the same way I do and reading the same things, although I kind of like that when I knew the whole church was reading everything the same way. That's fine. Study the Bible. But what I fear is that we started out well, but we ran out of gas. Amen? I must stand in the way, and I can't stand in the way if I don't know what that way is. Not only is it stand, look else what he says. Stand, uh, 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 thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the way and see. If I told you to go out into the middle of Interstate 35, stand right in the middle of the eastbound traffic in Dallas, four lanes wide, I want you right on the center line in the middle lane and see. What would you expect to see? Whatever it is that's about to run over you. Amen? The Bible says, stand in the word and see. See what? See what God will and can do. The old paths, which are founded on the word of God, hold the presence and power of God. And that which you will see is God. Stand ye in the way and see what God can do. My Bible tells me God can do all things. Amen. Amen. I find that he says one more thing, and I'm about to run out of time, so I'm trying to hurry. He said, and, and, and see, and then and ask for the old paths. See, if I'm to find the old paths, I've got to want them. I told you last week, I don't remember what it was in, an illustration, that I have a certain attire that I like. I buy my ties in a certain way. You're borderline. 
This is about the, the most narrow tie. I'm wearing one a little, little, a little wider than that today. That's a, oh, yours is wider. I didn't see the bottom part. That's about from there to what I'm wearing. That's where I buy. But if you go down to a suit store, go to uh, Joseph A. Banks downtown, which is where I buy a lot of my stuff. And when you go in, the first thing you're going to want to do is to show you the new stuff. And I bought this suit. Was this Joseph? Yes, this is a Joseph A. Banks suit. I've had it about five years, maybe seven. And when I went in, I didn't pay attention. And they said, this is the modern suit. Well, it was what I, I like. It's a narrow, it's not a real wide lapel. It's not real thin lapel. And it takes a nice tie. But look at this. A double split. I hate them. And they come and go in style. I buy single split suits. Now, Brother Stephen, he's a more modern version of me. He doesn't like any splits. And he buys a suit and takes it to a tailor and have them sewed up. So that his don't have any split. You know what a split on a coat's for, by the way? Huh? Well, sort of. <laughs> Why hips? How many of y'all know what a duster is for? Like a coat you put on that split down the legs. To ride a horse. So is the split in the suit. So a preacher, when he got on his, on his horse, it would open up and not set on it and ruin it in his saddle. You know what this is for? This is just came from purgatory. <laughs> Amen? This is a napkin. In the days of the kings, these things here used to be a bib, came around like that. It was a bib, really. And little by little it developed into a tie. And nowadays when you get through preaching, you take this off instantly because this costs more than the shirt. This stuff all changes. It does. And no matter how you try to stay in the, middle of the, in the middle of this road, something's going to pull you a little bit one way or the other. And the devil knows that's how we are. So he starts trying to pull us away. Stand ye in the way, because it's in the way that you see the power of God and the presence of God in your life. Amen. I know it's almost over, and I've, I'm not even going to get through with this message. But maybe in 25 years I'll get to preach another anniversary day and I can finish it. <clears throat> but why? Why is that important? If I'm saved, we Baptists believe if you're saved, you're always saved. We Baptists believe when you die, you're going to heaven even if you die drunk in a car. We just call you backslidden and give you to God. Let God sort them out. Now, I do understand a lot of people that claim to be a Christian aren't. A lot of people that claim to be a backslidden Baptist never were a believer to start with. You've got to be a believer in something before you can backslide from it. But why should I care? I mean, if I've got my ticket punched, what difference does it make how I live when I die? It's all under the blood. <clears throat> of course, we don't have time to talk about losing all those treasures and all those crowns and all that. We don't have time for all that. Here's why you seek the old paths. Because therein are the promises that we need for our peace of mind. Listen to this, what he says. Stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul, and ye shall find rest for your soul. Can I tell you something, believer? The only place you can walk in the rest and in the peace of God is in the Word of God. <clears throat> I think sometimes we have a lot of trouble in our life. If not terrible trouble, then there's a lot of stuff that just comes upon us because the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Everybody that has died from COVID during this thing is not necessarily an unbeliever. So there is a, a, just a flow. When Adam sinned, uh, a death was loosed amongst men, and death has a ministry in, in, in man and, until God doth put death away. <clears throat> but sometimes I think that our lives are 
how can we put this? We are believers that are somewhat bruised up. I helped Kyle yesterday work on a house and we're fixing some place for that girl and her husband to, to live. And uh, I came out pretty well, Kyle. I'm only cut here, I'm only cut there. And I've stuck this finger and that's sore as a boil. You've done all that when I wasn't even there. I know, I know. I did all the work. <clears throat> you heard him say that. <clears throat> But I find this, uh, this to be true. There's, a, there's a, a, a good reason to stand in the way. There's a good reason to walk with God. And here it is. He said this. I've got to get back here and read it for you. And ye shall find rest for your soul. Amen. Now hang on to this. That's not talking about eternity. Though we know when we got, get into eternity and this corruption puts on incorruption, this mortality puts on immortality, we will have an eternal place of rest and peace with God. No more sin, no more diseases, no more wars. All that stuff is gone, just glory. <clears throat> but he says if you stand in the way when there's a pandemic, you will still be trusting God. When we stand in the way and the doctor tells you you've got six months, there's still a peace in your soul. When we stand in the way and somebody tells you someone broke into your bank account and took all of your money, you'll be saying, I understand that and that's tragic, but I lean on God, not on my bank. Amen. When you stand in the way, God walks with you. Amen? And I'm telling you, folks, there are believers who have their name written in the Lamb's book who are away from God, and they think that God's on their side, and eternally He is, but it may be God that's bringing the roadblocks in their life to get their attention. If you stand in the way, you're standing where the promises flow, where the, the windows of heaven are open and pour you out a blessing that it may overflow. You must be in the way. Amen? For 75 years, Bible Baptist Church has stood in the way. Amen. Carried the gospel light forward. Has it changed? Yes, in the trivial things. We went from beards to no beards back to beards. We went from wide lapels. Do you know what my first suit was? When I got saved, I didn't own a suit, okay? I went to J.C. Penney's and bought a leisure suit. Anybody remember leisure suits? They were polyester and they had big buttons. If you'd have had a red nose, well, never mind. <clears throat> and I bought that suit so I could go to church in a suit. Can I tell you what happens to polyester every time you get it cleaned? I bought it, it was in style. They were half bell bottom, yes, and they went clear to the floor. You know, remember? Supposed to break right out near your toe and touch the floor and the back. It was good. And every time it got cleaned, it got shorter. By the time I finally put that thing away, I was wearing high water suits. And they weren't in style. Amen? Those things change. but the message never does. And if this church is to be here, God willing, and he doesn't come, for another 75 years, we will only be the power and the lighthouse of Bridgeport and, and Wise County if we continue in the, in the gospel message. Amen. And change not. We must hold to those old paths, amen, because therein doth abide the blessing and the power and the presence of God. Wow. See, I was way overstudied, wasn't I? Amen. But here's the truth. You can't stand in the paths of God and know not God. There's a lot of people who think they're going to heaven who've never confronted God for their sin and for their redemption. Can I tell you, you're not going to heaven. Don't care how good you think you are, you're not going. To stand in the paths, 
You've got to know he that is the light. And you know him that is the light by confronting God concerning your sin, receiving him and his blood, his cross for your cross, his blood for your sin. If you haven't done that, then I'm telling you right now, you are not part of the family of God and you cannot walk in the paths of God. Amen. Say, well, I'm as good as anybody else. You bet you are. And every man in the world is a sinner, the Bible says, and every man in the world is going to hell except he meet Jesus Christ. But once we have encountered Jesus, then we ought to walk in the ways of God. It should be our desire to walk in the ways of God. And the only way you can know the ways of God is in God's Bible. To know it, to study it, to find the way that the light leads you. Not to, somebody, I I think people think that that this Christian life is a, a democracy. Well, God says one thing, what everybody else say. It doesn't matter what everybody else says. It's what God says in that book because that is his way. Walk ye in it. Stand with me if you would. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come to you this morning, we thank you for 75 years of this church. Looking forward, Lord, to a future that's as bright as the past. Looking forward, Lord, to a church uh, that will be a testimony for your gospel for all the days that you should live it, leave it here. But, Lord, we know that will only happen if we walk in the way of the path, of the old path, if we walk in the ways of the word. And Lord, do I know there's things that's going to change, but there are those things that have to do with God that should never change. The word never changes. Holiness never changes. That which we're required uh, to do as a witness and to serve God as to carry in the gospel of the world, that doesn't change. Lord, help us to walk in the old paths, that we might know your presence, your power. God, we pray for this church and for the believers in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Page 40, we're going to sing a verse of